wouldn't I be able to much more quickly and efficiently find what's a match for me and what's not? Hello and welcome to this week's video. We're going to be talking about the ego in a way that may be a little bit controversial because everybody, including me, says you should make the ego smaller, like calm the ego down and basically just tame it, right? Some people even say kill the ego, but I'm in the camp that I can never accept that because as if you've watched my channel, you know this, as I've said, the ego is a part of us. It can never be like, detached from us. It is just a very necessary part of the human experience because it's the steward, right? It's the thing that makes the exchange between the inside and the outside. It deals with perception. It deals with wanting and desire in the physical world, etc. So since the ego is always going to be there, the best thing would be to work with it. However, I have always thought that working with the ego meant making it smaller, taming it down, handling it basically. But now I'm wondering, I'm not wondering, I've already tried this. <laughs> Maybe there's another way. Maybe the ego actually has something to say, which is something that came about actually from, you know, me being in a state where my ego, I'm just not listening to it. But then checking in with the different parts of myself, I see that actually my ego has something that is to say that's actually reasonable. And it doesn't sound like the childish child, bratty child that I've always thought that it was because I used to get triggered for simple things in my day to day life, which is something that's not happening anymore. And I can recover much quicker quicker if something on the outside happens, etc. So I took a step back and I thought, wait, I've been working with the ego like this for years now, taming it down, making it feel safe, not listening to it. Why did I assume that that work was just not yielding any results? Why have I just completely written off the ego? And so I started checking with it more and I found that the things that the ego was saying to me, <laughs> this is, that maybe sounds weird to some people, but I check in with like different parts of myself, like there's my body, there's my soul, my intuition, my ego, and they all say slightly different things. And recently, for the past, I know, six or more months, I've been noticing that the ego has some reasonable things to say that kind of make me think that the ego is thinking about my soul, the ego is thinking about my intuition, da, da, da. it's kind of like handling things much better than a bratty child. So maybe my ego is not a bratty child anymore, maybe my ego is something else that I haven't explored and how exciting it is to have another perspective as to who I am, right, in this system, ecosystem here inside, right? So I've actually realized at least three reasons why it was holding me back not to listen to it once it was already more healed. The first reason that I realized it was holding me back to not to listen to the ego is that it was keeping me stuck to accept everything external. For me, when I decided to tame down the ego and the ego is the problem and etc. I needed to deem the ego as the problem. So that meant that if there's anything that I'm feeling, I need to work on my ego for that. I And I should be able to accept all the things on the outside without being triggered or without feeling bad or just, you know, basically accepting whatever comes. However, this sounds good, right? It does sound good, but, but, at least me, I did not come to earth to live so ascetically, or to, I don't, I didn't come here to be a monk, and I know this because I don't have any desire to 
meditate for 16 hours a day or go live up in the mountains or join a monastery or something like that. So I know that that's not, you know, that's not in, within my potential, basically. It's not my highest potential in this life. For that reason, should I really be accepting everything? And if I followed what the ego is telling me a little bit more, wouldn't I be able to much more quickly and efficiently find what's a match for me and what's not? So since the ego is a part of me, if I follow the ego, provided that it's like healthy to, you know, to a point, then if I follow the ego, that will only make me more authentic because the ego is a part of me as well. And in that way, it's keeping me stuck in a place of inauthenticity and in a place where I can't find the matches for me on the outside world if I keep ignoring the ego, putting it in the corner and never listening to it. So I did start to listen to the ego more and it led me to remove things from my life and it led me to accept more things in my life that, you know, as I removed some things, other things came that matched me more and I feel like ever since I started doing this, I've just become just so much happier about what is in my life because I don't constantly have a reminder that I have a fault in me, the ego, that needs to be fixed because I need, I still haven't accepted this thing as it is. Which is not to say that the thing is wrong or bad, you know, just because I don't want to live in a monastery doesn't mean that it's bad to live in a monastery. It's not, the things that I removed are not bad, they're just not for me. Authentically, within all parts of me, including my ego. And of course, without having to be working on those flaws that are not really flaws, they're just me, my ego, wanting to find a better match. <laughs> without having to work on that, I'm no longer stuck in that rut. And I feel like I'm moving forward much faster. I'm finding things much faster. I'm changing also faster. It's, it's just been really a good ride. The second reason is that it can shoot down your confidence to always keep the ego small. Of course, if you're not distinguishing yourself from other people, you can't attribute any qualities to yourself. Because if your ego is so small that you won't even compare yourself to others, then you have basically no sense of self and no, not a lot of sense of being embolstered by being yourself as well. So this is why the ego is such a necessary part of the human experience. We need to individualize. We need to be different from other people. So the ego is a big part of that. The ego is the part of us that does that. And of course, this comes with the conversation of, oh, but comparison is bad. Oh, comparison will make you feel bad. Actually, no. Actually, that is the byproduct of a very childish ego that you haven't worked with enough yet. But if the ego is already like grown and more healthy, it understands its place and it understands like other truths, like the infinite worthiness and value of everybody else, as well as you. And the thing that I just said about just because two people or two situations or two things don't match doesn't mean that one person is inferior to the other or one person is bad and one person is good. The ego that you've worked with already understands this. And so when you compare, there is this underlying knowledge that it doesn't mean anything to compare. However, since we are still in an, a world where there is a lot of exchange with the outside where we have come here as individuations of a certain personality, a certain like soul, let's say, then it is beneficial to compare and to know who you are. And it doesn't have to come with emotional baggage. Because comparison, if you're feeling good about yourself, comparison is not gonna make you feel bad. If you already feel bad about yourself, comparison is going to make you feel worse. 
So comparison is not the thing that's the problem. The thing that is the problem if you feel bad comparing yourself to someone else is that you're making it mean something, is that your ego is still throwing a tantrum, etc, 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 etc. But if all that has been cleared, or most of it, I mean, I don't claim to have the most perfect ego on earth, okay? But let's say most of that has been cleared, then comparison can be good because it can make you feel good about yourself. You can say, oh, you know what? I'm good at my job, you know? Many people don't go to work with the commitment that I do. Something like that. Or you can go like, you know what? I'm pretty cool. You know, not, as, not many people like this movie that I like, you know? <laughs> and obviously, the ego, everybody, everything in you is gonna know that this is kind of a joke. It's kind of a play. But it's okay because life is play as well, you know? And the world is kind of like a playground and we're having fun with it and we're not actually saying that somebody else is inferior to us because they don't like this movie. We're just like in bolstering. We're just like having fun. We're just like differentiating ourselves, making ourselves like known to us and valuable to our own ego. Like, yeah, I'm pretty cool. Yeah, I'm pretty... Uh, good at my job, committed. I'm, I have all these attributes. How cool is that? And we don't have to make it mean that we are looking down on others just because we think we're cool, <laughs> right? And that is kind of a game changer because confidence, right? Everybody's looking for confidence. Most people don't say find confidence through comparing yourself to others. <laughs> but if you do have that um, a healthy ego, then it's holding you back that you're not like looking at yourself in that way, like seeing yourself as really cool or awesome person or like what a blessing it is that I'm on earth, you know, for other people and for the world because I have so much to offer because I can help other people because I can create this and that and I can just be in my presence is, you know, divine, something like that. If you're not doing that, it's holding you back because you could be doing that and it could be making you feel a hundred times better about your just your day-to-day -day life. It could be like, oh my gosh, I'm so cool. How awesome that I'm walking on the sidewalk right now. The third reason may be the, the one that's more deeply important and that's it's holding you back to ignore your ego because it can create a lack of self-trust. Because since the ego is the part of you that's stewarding the everything that goes between the inner and the outer worlds, that means it's the ego that's going to tell you what your boundaries are, your personal boundaries right now. So if you don't listen to the ego, you're not giving yourself a true place in your life, basically. And you're not going to be able to uphold the boundaries of you taking that space, taking up that space, right? It's going to be like, well, but if I don't do this, then I'm just listening to my ego. Well, yeah, the ego is a part of you that's going to like assert your personality and the space that you take up in relation to the outside world. So if you breach that, that's going to be a breach of self-trust. And I don't think I need to talk about why not having self-trust is bad. So once you have that more healthy ego, it's going to be good for you to listen to it more and be like, oh, actually, this is not within my authenticity to do this right now. I'm not this person. So I enforce this boundary. And then you go like, obviously, oh, wait a second. We're doing stuff that's in accordance to our holistic system, including the ego, maybe we're more trustworthy than we thought before, huh? And so you build self-trust, and so everything falls into place, your habits start happening, you start growing, you start becoming more confident, you start... And before we go into the how, I want to add the caveat again that you must make sure that your ego is actually healthy enough. How did I start 
to wake my ego back up. Well, in the beginning, it was that surprising realization that, hey, you're pretty reasonable, so I'm going to listen more to you. So I started listening more to see what the ego has to say in the situation. And just giving it that validation, like, hey, you're being listened to now, we're talking. And uh, then just starting to play with it. Always knowing, of course, that this is just a part of me and this is just play. Then go like, huh, what else does the ego have to say about who I am on this earth and like my life and whatever. Then starting to actually help <laughs> the ego with that. Like, because at first my ego was like, huh, is it really okay to say that I think I'm pretty cool in comparison to other people? Because I've been conditioned to not ever say that kind of thing because it's comparative. And then going like, yeah, you can say it, let's go, like, let's run with it and let's play and let's have fun. And that's what I did and that's what I've been doing. And it's been so much fun, so much fun that it started seeping into my, the way I show up for my life and my actions and who I am. And I let it happen as well. This is all part of the how. Letting it happen, letting it come into your real life. Going into a room much more self-assured, like, oh, okay, thank you, I don't need y'all's opinion, like, I'm good. Because <laughs> my ego already knows that I'm awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? And of course, this is just play. But in real life, what else is there? I mean, I go to work. It's not a serious thing. Like, it's not like a life or death thing. Like, after this job, the next job, you know what I mean? I, there's no seriousness in my day-to-day -day life for the most part. So I can play in it. I And this has been a great way to play as well. And please note that I did not go and act superior to other people. I did not go and put other people down. Those are all things of a an unhealthy ego that needs to prove itself and needs the others to know and needs confirmation from the outside world that it is what it is. No, this is a, a healthy ego that's coming and telling the world, hey, not even telling, just like showing and being. I am this. That's it. And that, of course, led to more authenticity, more self-assurance, more confidence, just more, more me being me unapologetically and it's been so great i hope that other people apply this too i think the world would be a better place if more of the healthy egos were showing up like this and i plan to do it even more i don't know what's gonna happen we'll see but if you're a good person you can show up with a bigger sense of taking space and a bigger sense of being you and a bigger self sense of being not apologetic because you're a good person like you're doing good you're not harming anybody why are we making ourselves small if we're at that point right we should make ourselves bigger and kind of like just create that in the world if for nothing else just for it to be in the world in you know at all in general Nobody even has, has to see, nobody has to be inspired by it or take note, but the fact that it exists is already better than it not existing, right? So I hope this will inspire someone to like play with the ego, let it lead a little bit more, always with a caveat that this has no bearing upon anybody's worthiness, not me, not you, not anybody else, and it's just play, you know, it's just a part of you. That's what I wanted to say about the ego. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget that I have an anonymous questions Google form now, and you can find that, I guess, in the description. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.